wonderful seal. Uh, seal's name is Hampshire. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Man Alone, and there's no one else here. I'm just a uh, yeah, just a man alone. And today we're going to talk about journaling in solo role playing games. Um, <clears throat> we're in fact going to give seven ideas. That I'm going to present. I'm not going to say that these are necessarily seven ideas I have because a lot of these were inspired by those who uh, wrote in the comments of uh, a post asking uh, different approaches to journaling. And thank you um, for those of you that did. And I, you know, I um, I can't say which one is best because the best way to journal in RPGs is the way that works for you. And what a load of non help crap that is if you have no idea what's best for you and so I want to present some different ideas here maybe something will spark your fancy and will help you to get over the solo RPG hump and what are we talking about with the solo RPG hump we're talking about that thing that many of you feel have felt will feel again which is you constantly love the idea of solo role-playing but you can never seem to get yourself over the hump to actually start doing it. There's something about it that feels like it's the right thing for you to do, um, but there's just something holding you back. And this is pretty normal. You know, a lot of people have this with a lot of different things. A lot of people want to read more, but they never find um, that they can really sit down and, and dig into a book. There seems like there's something always better to do. And that is because um, reading, uh, solo role-playing, these are intellectual investments that require some revving. You have to rev yourself up. You have to do, you have to create a setting for yourself. You have to sacrifice other things to do these. And that can be really difficult, especially now when there's so many things that are demanding our attention. And so I get it, but I can tell you of all the things that make it difficult to successfully solo RPG, the one that comes up again and again and again is journaling. And this is because I think this is actually the thing that scares the most amount of people off is journaling. I <clears throat> shouldn't say it scares them off. Um, <clears throat> I would say that it is something that can start to feel quite tedious and even if you really like the idea of solo role playing, as you start journaling and, you know, you're, you're on your 15th paragraph and you go, man, I, I just don't want to do this. I just don't feel like doing this. Um, that's very common. And I think when, a, you know, a person can sit and try it once. And if they have that experience, that is the emotion, the sensation, the internal feeling state that they're going to associate with solo role playing. And so in order to do that, in order to then solo role play, it becomes about as difficult as cleaning, you know, your house because cleaning your house is something, cleaning your bathroom. This is something that you should be doing right now. Everyone watching this needs to clean their bathroom, but you're watching this instead. And it's because watching this is a lot easier than cleaning your bathroom and you can be passive. And when you can be passive and learn something, that feels like you're doing something um, that you don't have to do anything to do, right? It's way easier to just um, relax yourself, relax your mind, receive things. And solo RPGing is, is this experience in which we are both uh, experiencing, we are witnessing something happening, but we're also creating it, we're co-creating it. So much like a dream, we are both observing and creating at the same time. And so the question of creation, how to create, how to journal is something that I want to offer some ideas for. And as we go through them, maybe you'll find something that resonates with you. Maybe you won't. Maybe this is the last time you'll ever think about solo role playing. And uh, if that's the case, I wish you well. And I, you know, keep in touch. Let me know what you do. I mean, because there are other things to do. Um, you could... Um, you could collect NFTs. Um, those are hot. Is that, are they? I don't know. I knew they were at one, I don't know. I don't want to make any proclamations. I have no investing advice for you, but I do have advice on journaling. And here uh, we're going to start <clears throat> with the first idea for journaling in solo RPGs is to journal. 
So this is undeniably the first idea. For some of you, um, this is the only thing you've tried. For some of you, this is the only thing that works for you. Journaling as exactly as you would expect journaling to be. You find your little journal, you open up to a, bl a blank page, and you write a sort of memoir of what happens in a scene. And for some people, they can do that um, uh, every single decision they make, every time they, they uh, take an action, they can continue this narration of it. Some people will type, some people will write. And so um, that is something that will work, I estimate, for about 5 to 10% of you. 5 to 10% of you um, are able to sit and write for a long time and be immersed in that and not start to feel um, the, the shiver willies, as I call them. <clears throat> the shiver willies is a specific type of, of um, jittering nausea that I get when I'm typing too much and I don't feel like I'm making enough forward progress. I start to feel like I get deeper and deeper into a point until I start to say, what the hell am I even talking about, right? I almost feel nauseous. I feel some deep... Um, unrest inside my soul because I don't know if I'm moving forward and I don't know if there's any reason for it. And what I would like to suggest is that if you feel this way, you need to get rid of this approach. You need to just, you need to unashamedly not do this. Okay. Don't feel that's the first thing. If you can't do this, it's for 90 to 95% of people that can't do this. And the reason is because a lot of people don't like writing. That's why they're not everybody is an author, okay? And one of the things about being an author is that there's often this self-propelling internal feeling state that, that authors will get from writing where no matter what they're writing, they feel as if they're making some sort of forward motion, that they're participating in an activity that they enjoy that feels purposeful, or even if they don't enjoy it, you know, like um, Murakami sometimes says, doesn't always enjoy it, but there's this feeling of like, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Some people, I would say a wider range of people can journal if they are able to show others what they're writing. Um, and so if this is the case, if you're in that, I would say it's not like 15% and you can find a good place to, to show your journals and in your campaign notes, that could be um, a good way for you to motivate yourself. But a lot of people, when they're writing for themselves, they just are struck with a sort of nihilism at some point of going, why am I doing this? What is the purpose of this? And there's no purpose for it. There's no purpose for anything. There's no purpose for solo RPGing. It's something to do, okay? It's something to do. And so if that something to do is not making you feel good, get rid of this, all right? Um, number, well, let me do a better, let me, let me go a little more gradual here. Okay. Uh, you know what? Actually, here we go. All right. Uh, number two is bullet points or class notes. So again, this is something that you probably watching this, you know how good at this you are. Because all you need to ask yourself whether this will work for you is if you were good at taking notes in school, if you felt like you had a good system, if you felt like you could handle that cognitive load. So what does this involve? It involves bullet points, writing arrows, maybe making some lists, making tables, and then you go back to it later when you have to study. And if at the point that you go back to it, you are able to summon a um, sort of at least partially complete memory of what the teacher or the professor was saying at that time, then this is a good approach for you because this means that you're able to take a sufficient amount of information, write it down on an economy of time, right? Because the, the thing about taking notes in class is that the teachers keeps on talking. And so if that works for you and it, or it worked for you when you were in school, it will work for you for solo RPG playing because what you really want to focus on is making sure that you are writing in a way that you enjoy and in a way that you will be able to like use these notes in the way that you want to use them. And that's important. That is a fundamental question is why do you want a journal? Okay. Um, because there are some 
choices we have there. And I think sometimes people don't realize the choices that there are in that place. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But again, I would call this, you know, the bullet points or the class notes, writing the minimum amount of referential information necessary in order to recall that scene in your head. Okay. Um, movie summary. And uh, this one was from Willona's Cave. And I, I, I like this idea of playing it out as a movie in your head and thinking, if I were to describe a movie to somebody, how would I describe it? All right. So um, think about this. Think about if uh, just take any movie. OK, take any movie and think about how you would describe it. Um, let's see. How about. Uh, how about Escape from L.A., the sequel to Escape from New York, starring Kurt Russell, where he's now goes in again as Snake Plissken and has to infiltrate some sort of prison island that's now in Los Angeles. And the first one was from New York. How would I explain that movie? Well, you got Snake Plissken and he's, you know, this hardened criminal. And you know that because he wears a patch and black pants and he's really good. Maybe he was ex-military. Anyways, they're sending him back. What do you mean I have to go back into this prison? I said I would never go in again. You got to go in again, Snake. Uh, no, I won't do it. Uh, we planted a chip or something in your neck. And if you don't do it, your head will blow up. Uh, you bastards. Okay, goes to the island, infiltrates the criminal organization, has this extremely bizarre scene where he has to play a game of bat, of horse. Or maybe he just has to hit a free throw, three-pointer, and half-court shot, or else he gets killed, which is like, you know, I, I love the idea that if you're a like a Navy SEAL special forces, you're just automatically good at basketball because it's like physical anyways. Uh, yeah. And then he infiltrates it. He brings the whole thing down and then the government tried to double cross him, but he was a step ahead and um, he made it out and he made him pay. I don't, I haven't seen that movie in 20 years, but that's a summary. I just gave of that movie. Um, that's enough to recall the movie. And if we start to, to describe every single thing that happens the first time that Snake Plissken is on screen, um, I would still right now be describing the opening scene. And the litmus test for when this is not a good choice, uh, uh, like the journaling thing is not a good choice, is if the journaling activity itself starts to take as much or more time than the actual play while you were playing that scene, okay? The journaling should be a reference to it, a way of making meaning of it, a way of um, uh, enhancing it, illuminating the material, putting it into a certain perspective. It should not be work. And it certainly should not take longer than how much time you spend playing. And so a movie sum summary is a great reference. And if you want to think about this more concretely, go ahead and go on to Wikipedia. And what you can see is there's very funny lines of how movies are described that in the movie, they're very intense or epic or like jaw dropping moments that are explained very quickly. Now, I'm not sure I'm not looking at the Wikipedia page for Face Off right now, the greatest movie ever made starring John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. But the scene where they actually decide to like re replace their faces with each other's faces, there's a lot of intense music going on. There's a lot of surgeons that are going, oh, the wiping sweat off their brow. It's never been done. We're, we're, we're putting John Travolta's face on Nicolas Cage. Will it work? Oh, my God. How will they react? I bet you in the Wikipedia page it says, then they decided to switch their faces. That's enough because what that's going to do is going to summon up that feeling in you. You don't need to write everything that was involved in that feeling because you already felt it. Okay. So we're sort of writing in reverse as we're journaling in games because um, if it was just the writing, if you were just reading what you wrote and had never played it out or experienced it, sure, you would need more of that stuff in order to translate that emotionality but you're playing, you've already had the emotion. So just track it if that's what you want to do. 
Okay. And so go ahead, go on Wikipedia and look up a couple um, movies. Let me know uh, face off how that goes. But even if it's not as, as point blank as I, as I said it, um, you'll see that a lot of major scenes in movies can be summarized into a sentence or two. Take lessons from that. And I think it, it creates a good um, analog. Uh, last thing I want to say about this is that, uh, well, I've kind of already said it, but I want to emphasize it, is that movie summaries are dispassionate. Okay. They do not require emotional involvement. They are a play by play. And I think in addition to the length of what you write, you also have to think about removing that emotionality from it just so that you can get a report on it. All right. Um, now sparks, uh, I actually, you know, another one for this might be called like the password approach. Okay. So uh, bad marker, bad marker. So the password, if you've ever played the game passwords, um, and you, you know, if you had to reduce like a, an idea, uh, into one word without describing it and hope that your, your teammate, um, knew what you were talking about. Um, it, it usually there's like a category in the game passwords, right? Um, something like machines and you might say, um, fiery. And that might mean like a very fast car or something like that, right? So you're trying to find, um, you're trying to find the, the the core word that represents what you're referring to, right? So like if you said growl, that might be a password for wolf. Um, and if you were trying to get someone to uh, say basketball, you might say dribble. But of course, the password you know, dribble, they might think, oh, dentist, your spits dribbling out of your mouth or something. That's the thing. But, but the, the, the reason, uh, th this is what we would call sparks, trying to find the central word or pair of words that describe a scene that spark the memory of it. Okay. So you could take your character, uh, as they're leaving town, going on the first leg of their adventure, they're crossing a bridge. And just as they're in the middle of the bridge, Three zombies crawl up the side, uh, two in the front, one in the back, and the character's in the middle and surrounded on all sides, and they start going uh, towards him, and then all of a sudden he reaches to his waist where his sword was, and he realizes he forgot his sword in the town. And then you say, okay, cut scene. Probably not going to cut a scene there if you're solo playing. You might play through that, but let's just say... What are the sparks involved in that? What are what are the things that like are going without you having to write um, more than you know five words? I would say triangle, zombie, bridge, sword. Damn it! All right. I'm going to read those. And because I created that scene, this is all I need right here to resummon it in my head. That's all I need. Okay. And if I wanted to, I could give it like a heading, you know, I could just say zombie bridge, what happened there? And that's it. And in order to do this, you're going to have to let go some, okay, let's have a talk. Some people have this, um, interesting guilt that I think is inborn in them for various reasons. It could be because you're kind of a perfectionist or in school, you always felt like you were, had an inadequacy in terms of, um, conveying your ideas. You don't feel like a strong writer. You don't feel like, um, you maybe no matter what you do, you worry that it's not enough. Even if it's just for you, you still have that worry. And so you feel like I got to, I got to make this substantial. I got to do something. I got to create something or else I'm not really playing. You have to get rid of that. You're really playing. Okay. All you need is whatever you need to be enough for what you're trying to do. So if you can come up with five sparks, have a realistic conversation with yourself, look at those and say, is this going to spark what I needed to spark in my head in order for me to carry this on? That's it. 
Don't worry about if it's enough. If you can get it in two, do it in two words. That's it. You're not, this is not for anybody but you. Okay. All right. So, uh, did I ruin everything here? Yeah. I just flipped these around. Okay. Um, moving on. This was uh, another very good, um, suggestion here. And this is to look at this as an investigator. And in fact, I think it was such a good suggestion. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, Marzaic does it from, uh, um, an omniscient perspective and, um, let's see, write a reference. Yeah. Well, Simon Templar says do it from non-omniscient, but either way, whether you want to do it omniscient or non-omniscient, thinking of it as an investigator taking notes on a scene might provide some emotional or, or point of view removal that's needed in order to write what is essential. And Grognard Solo Gaming also made the comment that you need to write only what is necessary. And sometimes if we write in first person, that can create a dynamic in which you feel like you need to transcribe everything you both see, do, and know. That's a heavy load. That's a tall order. OK, to write all that down, because if I right now were to do that, I'm just recording this video. I'm reading this. There's so much that I that I am seeing and doing and thinking about right now, not just about this video. I'm thinking about my day. I'm having intermittent thoughts about life and the cosmos. And uh, I'm thinking about, you know, uh, I'm going to have to get something on my car repaired. It's making a little bit of noise. And then I'm seeing all this stuff in front of me. And I have to tell you about that because that really sets the scene. You got to understand what it feels like to be sitting here. And then there's the somatic sensations. What does my butt feel like right now sitting on the chair? Uh, how does that little weird uh, crook that I have or crick in my wrist? Uh, how is that feeling right now? All of that stuff, you don't need it. Okay. Because you're experiencing it. And so all you need to do is to summon that. And one way that you can do this might be playing the role of an investigator. Maybe not necessarily inserting an investigator into the fiction of the game, but think about if you were not the person there, if like your character, your hero moved off that bridge and then an investigator came and jotted down some notes of what happened here, right? So they got their little, they're going, uh, okay, so there's like one, two, three zombies. They're dead. Looks like there's scratch marks on the railing. Maybe they climbed up and over the bridge here. Uh, and it's clear that um, they were killed by some blunt force trauma, right? So maybe this person didn't have a sword. Maybe they're just doing some zombie boxing. Um Nothing, no blood on the zombie's teeth. Okay. Uh, and not, I'm kind of painting this as like a crime scene investigation. It's not always going to be like that. It would more or less be like, you could think of it too as like a, a news reporter, right? Like giving a report on that. Uh, if you are one of the six people who still watch like the evening news, you will see, you know, people are boiling down a 780 hour court case in like two minutes. They're just giving what they need to tell about it. And this, again, is, is not necessarily a writing technique, but it is a great headspace to put yourself in in order to have productive journaling. Uh, here's an idea. Don't write. Um, don't, don't write. Uh, how about you record it? You could record it on your phone. A lot of phones have recorders. If you have like a little dictaphone, you could do that as well. Um, you could do text-to-speech. Um, text-to-speech has some hilarious errors. Um, but again, if you're not presenting it to anyone else, text-to-speech is going to do just fine. You're going to know or be able to suss out uh, if there are any mistakes made, what you were trying to say, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's another good option as well. Um, you could, uh, as uh, my, one, of my, one of my faves, um, let's see here. Uh, oh, old desert gal. So um, you can just doodle, right? Just make a little picture 
um, doesn't again doesn't have to be great could literally be like those that little like diagram that I made of the zombies on the bridge right because again you're just trying to summon this up think about what works for you and think about what feels easy to you because we all have a method of communicating that is easiest some of us it's writing a lot of us it's talking um, for some of us, it could be sketching. Hell, it could be a song. Make a song. I don't know. Whatever works for you. Whatever feels like relaxing to you. And I have to apologize if I, my voice keeps getting quieter. My mic stand is slowly drooping. And I'm like holding it. And then when I look, it's like down at my waist. Um, so yeah, don't write. Who cares? Do do something else. Um Again, I want to say most phones have a very good, you don't even need a good microphone. They have a very good uh, voice thing. And for some people, maybe a combination of two. Um, this is what I do very often. I will make an audio file of it. And then when I'm done with my session, I will turn the audio file on and start journaling. And I will use notes from that to create my journal. My rule is I only write a page. Okay, now if I'm using this, it's like two pages, both sides, just because the pages are small, but like A4, A5, you know, eight and a half by 11, one page. By putting that limitation on there, I already know in advance how much I'm going to write. And so there's no question of, did I do enough? Uh, should I do more? No, I've hit, my, I've hit my limit. That's it. That's all I have. That's all I can say. It's an artificial rule. Um, okay, the last suggestion I want to make is, is you know, it's very much a last suggestionist suggestion. But instead of don't write, just don't. Don't journal. Just don't. I mean, there are games that direct you to journal. And I imagine that a lot of people enjoy having something in their hands having some record of it, but maybe you don't, maybe you don't care. And that's fine. I mean, if you're playing a campaign, you might have to just jot some things down to remember where you are, but also who cares? You know, if your character sheet is filled out, what if you get some things wrong? What if you forget that you dropped your dagger? Who cares? This is for fun. It's for you. So just don't. If you don't want to do this, don't do it. And then also you could pick games that are going to be kinder to this idea. Okay. So for instance, like, um, you know, I was reading uh, those Anna Blackwell games uh, like Delve and uh, I can't remember. There's the one that's like the space. I just read these. They're the space one the underground one that you build like the stronghold, etc., And those are more like resource management games as I, I read more about them, but there is like prompts, you know, for journaling or things. Um, that's a good game if you don't really feel like writing a lot because it's all just gonna be, you know, numbers, erasing things and kind of saying how much of these resources you have left, drawing, you know, doodling a little something out. Uh, that's a great game. I was looking at Colossal, which I was gonna do a video of, um, but Colossal asks a lot um, in terms of journaling. It's a pretty heavy load. You know, there's there's not a lot of mechanics there. There's a lot of tables. Uh, but it's basically asking you to fill in a lot of descriptions. It's time to have it, it's time to have that honest conversation with yourself. And the honest question of that conversation is, do you care? Do you need to journal? Um, you don't. If you don't want to do that, don't do it. Uh, if you want to do all one shots, that's fine. I mean, very often I sit down for another session, even when I'm recording these. I think some people have noticed that and complained about it. Sometimes I'm like, man, I don't remember. I don't remember what I was talking about. Now, my advantage is for the games I play on here, I record it. So I guess that'll be my last suggestion that I didn't even make a card out of, which is you could record it. You could put it online. You could just record it for yourself, like in terms of video. It could be interesting. I would recommend as some homework that you just try it. Um, I just want to emphasize how low budget this setup 
that I have here is, okay? I wanna tell everyone that this camera is like an iPhone I bought three years ago. It's not even a good one. It's like an iPhone SE, like the one that doesn't even have face recognition. These lights are like two ring lights that I bought I think for like $17 each on Amazon. I have a keyboard over to my left. This little magic mouse pad is probably the most advanced thing I had, which you definitely don't need. And then this is the stuff I have around me when I solo RPG anyways, and this like Paizo um, little grid. That's it. And microphone, microphones, look on Amazon. You can find very decent microphones for less than 50 or even less than, you probably find a good microphone for $25 on Amazon that's serviceable, okay? And so if you think that that would be a good exercise for you, just try it out. Don't be intimidated uh, by that. It's really easy to set this stuff up. When you, I would say the most important thing when you are journaling is to start by identifying what you want out of the journal. And I can generally say that there are a few main things you might want. The first thing is you might want a record. This is for people who have kept journals for a long time in their own life, and they just love stacking the notebooks in like boxes under their bed. Then this is, that's someone who might, you might want to journal as if you're journaling. You might want to just keep this record. I don't understand that. And I mean that in like a non-judgmental way. I don't, that doesn't resonate with me, but that doesn't matter that it doesn't resonate with me because if it resonates with you, then that's what you should do. Okay. And so grab a notebook, grab a pen and start writing. Now you could want it as a way to like create a jump off point for your next session. And if that's all you want, then you need to minimize the amount of notes that you take to the bare minimum. And I would recommend getting used to spark sort of this shorthand. Um, knowing and experimenting with how few words you can use to capture an idea. And I'll tell you what, you'd be surprised at how few you can get away with because when you're really engaged in the solo RPG play, it only is gonna take a little tiny prompt to make you go, oh, right, 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 yeah, I was in a cave and there was like this mermaid, but they had, were evil, like an evil maid, and they had sharp teeth, etc. So that's what you wanna do, keep that in mind. Instead of jump off, if you wanna show off, you know, know that, know if you wanna show this to other people, if you wanna post it online, you wanna make a video, you wanna do a blog, you wanna do pen pals with somebody, uh, if you just need to, Throw it on a Discord server to say, here's how my session went, here's the insights, et cetera, et cetera. Then that is very good to know as well. And if you just need it to organize yourself during play, what I would recommend is using the journal as a way of like, think of it as an extension of a character sheet and use that to record things that are changes, changes that are happening from the baseline of the start of that session, of the start of that campaign, of the start of your character, so that you can remember what you need to remember and call, call up those things to yourself as you're playing. For some people, this is what allows them to solo role play is this mechanized recording of information that keeps them organized, okay? It's almost like they come up with a schematic as they're playing. And if that's the case, then I would recommend something like a combination of class notes, doodles, and just having a very utilitarian mindset about what is gonna work for you, and then throwing away all expectations of like what it is to do it the right way or to be a true gamer, et cetera, I very often will solo play without writing anything, especially if it's a journaling game, like a true journaling game where it just has prompts. I'll just think of that in my head. I don't see, like for me, it's like, why not? You know, I, but again, I'm the kind of person that like anytime I'm listening to like a self-help audio book and it gets to the part where it's like, pause now and write down three things about yourself that you'd like to change over the next year. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'll just, I know the basic three things and I just like let it keep playing. <laughs> I loved admitting that. I don't think I've ever admitted that, but it's totally true. I never pause 
that's just something you have to be brutally honest with yourself about. Just be brutally honest. If you're bored by things that people say you shouldn't be bored by, oh, well, oh, well, you're bored by them. Nothing you can do. You can do those things to, with like great suffering or you could just work around them. And I want to say that one of the best parts of solo RPG playing is that it's like completely up to you. It is a way to actually get in touch with your wants and your whims because I don't know if I were to, you know, I, I don't like it when people oversell things. Um, you know, they're like, oh, I really love my group exercise class because it, it taught me how to be a, you know, a better father or something. And it's like, maybe, or, or can it just be like exercise? And in the same way, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get in the habit of expecting solo RPG playing doing too much for me. I rather take note of what it does for me without intending, you know, I don't have that in mind because all I have in mind is to play. And you really need to start from that place of like, I'm about to sit down and play. Because if you have it in your mind that you're about to sit down and write a book or journal, that's going to feel like work. Don't make this into work. If you feel like you want to play this, let's figure out a way that you can do this um, without it having that same feeling of cleaning your bathroom. And the last one that I want to suggest is make a challenge for yourself to to role play, use the character sheet, you know, jot a few notes if you need to here and there, but really don't write anything down. And then when you're done with your session, write like a captain's log. You know, if you ever watch Star Trek, you know, it'll kind of st that that would actually be like a good model, captain's log, star date, blah 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 blah. And then you you start out with a little lead in, and then at the end of it, you do a retrospective on everything that happens. You open and you close it, and that's it. And whether you record that or write that down or just speak it out loud, all I suggest, even if you don't take a single note, is do something kinetic. All right. That is my one suggestion is do something kinetic. Because I know that I said when I was listening to the self-help books, I'll just kind of scoot forward. I actually don't think that's good. What I probably should do is pause it and just speak those things out loud. Because I don't want to write it down and I'll never get to a point in my life where I want to write it down. Sorry. That's just... That's some self-help right there, just knowing that I don't want to do that. But there should be something kinetic. There should be another way that your body journals along with you. It could be with your mouth. You could be speaking it out loud. It could be with your hand. It could be with whatever. But create a second avenue besides just thinking because that is going to, number one, create a memory. Number two, make it more real. And number three, help you to organize what is happening, organize the play. Those right there are my three values. And from those three values is how I make my journaling choices. This video is about to end. Your homework assignment is write down, I'll tell you what, just two. Write down two or three, if you're feeling more, reasons why like what you want to get out of solo RPG play, write those down. And if you're smart, you won't even write them down. You'll just do the homework however you want. And good news, man alone is not grading. So that's it, that's it on journaling. I want to say some videos that I didn't uh, do tonight that I wanted to. I did get these Y-Hander starter kit. Uh, I know this is not a solo game, but I did... Um, recently back the new one and I wanted this to just kind of compare it from so I might do um might review what's inside the box it's supposed to be like a really good box um I also want to do colossal because there's a new colossal game colossal dungeons coming out I did share the trailer on my feed uh and I was like oh my gosh it's the third colossal and then I looked it's actually the fourth one so we're way behind um and and you know I, I almost wonder if as, as a way to demonstrate this sort of self-acceptance, I think since I've started this channel, I have constantly been talking about doing like a playthrough of Colossal. And every time I open it, 
there's something that I just go, eh, this is not exactly what I want. There's only two stats. But then I look, and the book is so beautiful. Here, look at this thing. These books, they're so beautiful. And they have such, it's such an interesting concept. And there's so much work put into it. And I go, look at this. You got all the tables with these prompts. And I go, come on, I got to play this game. And I bought the expansion. I bought Roomlands. And I heard this is even better because Geek Gamers said so. And I'm going, come on, I spent all this money on it. I really, you know what? I'm not doing a, I'm not doing a goddamn playthrough of Colossal. I'm not doing it. And I don't care. And I'm sorry. I'm done. See that? Don't forget your homework. And, um, you know, at some point I may do a playthrough of Colossal. All right, everyone. Thanks. And uh, don't forget to uh, load your dishwasher. <laughs>